and Blue Yonder. The win for Brodie Hampson. And to go. Cliff Top eight. Heaven and Brodie Hampson holding Kiss My Face close to the finish. Cliff Top Heaven and Brodie Hampson. For Crone Hall, for Brodie Hampson and Archie Watson. Tuck your shirt in, up towards the line, Rooks your wonder. It's massive, obviously. Archie trains over 100 horses, and Royal Ascot would be his main event of the year. He loves it. He loves training horses to run there. Um, I think he does really well there, to be honest. I think most horses run really well. He's had a few winners there, which is incredible. Um, but yeah, it is massive. Um, it's obviously getting busy. Um, Archie's always busy, but to be honest with you, you wouldn't know with him. He wouldn't be any different. He's not one that would get all stressed now because it's Royal Ascot. He'd just get more excited, if anything. He's really looking forward to it. The horses are doing their last few bits of galloping now. Um, he just gets really excited. He's not one that will get all stressed and worried. So um, it's quite nice because I guess a lot of people under pressure, they probably get all stressy and... Uh, yeah, it's just these two weeks are pretty fucking... just stressful getting everything there, really. Yeah. Actually, he obviously has all the suits. He always likes me to pick what colour waistcoat for it and what day. She says the trousers made me look like a chef. Um, and uh, she wouldn't help. <laughs> Far side St. Lawrence goes to the Wokingham, near side Shartash goes to the um, Queen Elizabeth II Jubilee as it's called nowadays. He was fourth in the West Day the other day. He's a very, very fast horse. And then just behind that you've got a horse called Vingagor who won at Chaps Day. He goes to the Windsor Castle, named after dual Tour de France winner. That's a Cameco called Hit Squad, nice horse, seven furlong horse. That's a Sergi Prokofiev called Jorginho on his first bit of work. Probably named after a footballer, I don't know. Um, even when Cheltenham Festival's on, I don't, unless I was riding, I wouldn't want to go. It's my worst nightmare, to be honest with you. Ascot dressing up. I'm not really that type of person, dressing up, finding a dress. But last year, everyone laughed because I didn't purposely book a holiday, but the week of Royal Ascot changed and I had booked to go away with the girls to Portugal and Archie was like a few weeks before I got he was like um, when when is it you're going to Portugal I was like oh I said the date and he was like oh Royal Ascot week <laughs> um, so yeah I was away for all of it but I was watching his winners on a sunbed with a cocktail. She um, went on her girls holiday during Royal Ascot yeah but I guess it was lucky we had three winners um, yeah, to be fair, the week moved. It's like, we got married at the very end of Royal Ascot last year. So she booked it for like the dates after that and then Ascot sort of moved back a week. But um, yeah, it was quite funny. Everybody asking where she was and I was like, oh, she's on holiday. Yeah, <laughs> busiest week of the year. Yeah. I'd sort it out for her as well. Sure. Well, we're coming back. We've been down at John Deere Stud Farm looking at um, some horse that was for sale. And we're on the way back and Archie texted and said, I got one in the amateur race, but John's got one in it. And I said, oh, tell him you'll ride it. So, that's on from there. Out. Yeah, that's where it came from, yeah. yeah. Next thing I asked her, are you going on a second date with Archie? And she said, oh, I might go on one soon. It turned out she'd been like living with him four weeks. She was actually, she was actually meant to have ridden for me before, but she broke her back. Uh, about six months previously, so we never actually met then. Um, that was on a horse called Captain Lars, who was a, like an 11 time winner for us. Um, but yeah, that December I messaged her just asking if she'd be able to ride a horse if John O'Shea would let her off something in the race, and um, yeah, got talking then, yeah. A lot of big meetings here, big races, so um, it's just brilliant. It's great that the Amateur Jockeys Association put this race on for us to ride here because it's massive. Um, obviously, I've not won it before. I finished second on it, in it, but um, I'd love it to be a massive race to win. It'd be one of the big ones for the amateurs to win. Yeah, I ride a horse called And Elite for Dan and Claire Kubler. Um, he looks a legend of a horse. He's ran plenty of times. He looks really consistent. Uh, I spoke to Simon Walker, who has won on him before, and he just said he's a great ride, so really looking forward to it. 
ball rolling now. You've got six winners to go as we stood here today talking about it. You took that one at the start of all this. Yeah, delighted with that. Really happy with six to go. Um, I've had four nice winners and to be fair at the beginning I wouldn't have picked them out as winners to be fair. So um, no, delighted to only have six to go now. Best you get to come. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> And then just a word on Royal Ascot, how's the vibe in the camp at home? How's Archie with a few days to go now? Very manic. <laughs> it is busy now. I, can't, I said to someone the other day, I can't remember the last time I had a conversation with him. He just gets back from work about one or two and then he's just on the phone 24-7, owners, vets, just dealing with everything for the build-up. He's got 17 runners, hopefully. Um, he's really looking forward to it. He thinks it's probably the best team he's had going into Ascot yet. So, um, yeah, it's pretty manic, but it's a great buzz. They travelled for it really well. Um, they went a nice gallop and then I just expected them to all kind of turn in and go down the middle, far side, uh, stand side. They didn't, they all went, they couldn't believe they stayed far side and then the route I had to take with my draw, I ended up in the wrong part of the track. Um, just the route I had to take and then I was kind of away from the action on the rail. But um, I think in that ground, he just doesn't quite see out that trip because like the last furlong was a bit of a slog. And um, I think he would have been fine over that trip on good ground. I had plenty of horse underneath me, but when it turned into a slog the last furlong, he just couldn't really get out of it. But no, he's a ledge. <laughs> oh god. We've had quite a few um, road trips lately, me and Sarah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah. yeah second time we had the Haydock in the week, we had Haydock, Goodwood, York, now Ripon. Yeah. Yeah. We've done them all together, thank God. I've got a ride on Clifftop Heaven. He, it's in the ladies' derby, so I've always thought it'd be quite a cool little race to win. He's quite a consistent horse. He won for me at Wolverhampton a couple of starts ago, and then he ran really well for me at Haydock a couple, um, a couple of weeks ago. And it's a bit short for him today, over a mile four, but He's consistently he tries hard, so when the races are there, you kind of just got to go for them. So, yeah, we thought we'd give today a go. The week leading up to it was a bit, um, was a bit stressful, quite full on. Like, I can't remember the last time I had a conversation with him. Just phone call after phone call. Just so busy with owners and planning. And But to be fair, this week is actually, it's funny with him. It's almost like it's the actual week and it's almost just like everything's done now. So just relax and enjoy it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what it feels like. Is it? Second, all these two-year-olds are the second, fourth and fifth this week. Today. Yeah. Today. Yeah, it'd be a nice fit one, wouldn't it? That's a good chance though. I kind of own it. We were walking out to the track and there's these two guys leaning on the post and one up. Well, they were talking to each other quite loud and it's like, yeah, Cliff Top Heaven, that should be winning anyway. <laughs> I was like, I wanted to say I apologise now. <laughs> I was just going to have a little sprint. <laughs> I've been keeping getting comments. Rob Havlin said it to me the other day, then the physio said it to me. I look like a tennis player. Do you get that vibe? No, the, no, the day Robert Havlin said it, I had this hat on. But I had blue shorts. I said, he's like, what court are you on? I was like, yeah, court two. but I've had to drill him out the gates because he, I don't yeah. know, everyone was going forward. So I drilled him and then I've just lit him up a bit too much, I think. So then he was a bit too keen down the back, but I still think we haven't gone quick enough. Me and Sarah, we should have gone quicker. But 
What, you think they sprinted up past you rather than... I feel like that, yeah, because I turned in and I thought, I generally thought he had broken down. That was just him not handling the track the way he's moving. Like, it was, it was the only bit that was soft was turning in and that he felt like he fucking broke down on that part. Um, yeah. So he's almost felt like he's broke down and then I've tried to squeeze him up, squeeze him up and then I was delighted once I got him, like, he felt okay when he got back onto the better ground and then yeah. they've just sprinted by me. Okay. Yeah, well, look, it is a, it, you know, it, long straight, but it, it is a sort of speedy 12s. That's unsurprising, really. Yeah. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, good luck. All right, done. Uh, yeah, good luck. Good Chatting luck. a bit. Bye Lots bye. of love. Bye. Yeah, exactly. She's got a little app thing where she looks up where they are. Yeah. Or we look at the name of the service stations and she'll be like, oh no, that's only got a KFC. Go to the next one. Yeah. Hey, uh, can I have a large chicken nugget meal with Coke? How many, sorry? Uh, six, please. Six. With a Coke? Yeah, anything else? And two of the mozzarella bites. Jump, jump back in, Carl. I need to go get some straws. <laughs>